This is why green anacondas are bigger than other snakes. When it comes to the world's most frightening and fascinating creatures, it doesn't get much more fascinating and frightening than big snakes. And big snakes don't get bigger than the green anaconda, the giant constrictor of the South American wilderness. Backed by millions of years of evolution, the anaconda lurks in the murky waters, waiting to ambush unsuspecting victims with immense power and brutality. But why are these serpents so large, especially when compared to other snakes? Is there a special anaconda diet and workout routine that other snakes are missing out on? Let's talk about it. Supersized Serpent Anacondas are constrictor snakes from the genus Eunectes, which is also under the Boidae or boa family. Also known as water boas, anacondas are renowned swimmers, wholly adapted to live in rivers, lakes, and swamps throughout South America. Most populations live in and around the Orinoco and Amazon basins, amid dense jungles and seasonally flooded plains. Today, we have five anaconda species. These include the Bolivian anaconda, Eunectes beniensis, northern green anaconda, Eunectes akayima, yellow anaconda, Eunectes notaius, dark spotted anaconda, Eunectes doshinensiae, and the green anaconda, Eunectes murensis. Another species, Eunectes stertoni, went extinct back in the middle Miocene. The green anaconda, also known as the southern green, common, or emerald anaconda, is the largest of the bunch. In fact, it is the largest snake in the world today, at least in terms of weight. These monsters are typically between 66 and 176 pounds on average, and some exceptional specimens have been claimed to reach 359 pounds. However, the biggest documented specimen weighed 214 pounds. They are no slackers when it comes to length either. Fully grown females, which are larger than males, are usually between 15 and 17 feet long, while the boys seldom exceed 10 feet. This means that the green anaconda is the second longest serpent on Earth, behind Asia's reticulated python, which can reach 23 feet in length. That said, the anaconda is significantly bulkier and more robust than pythons. Despite many great efforts, we still don't have exhaustive knowledge of just how big anacondas can get. The main reason for this is the relatively remote and inaccessible nature of most of their home ranges. So for all we know, there could be much larger snakes out there. Additionally, Based on skeletal structure and their aquatic abodes, some reptile scientists are convinced of the possibility of 500-pound anacondas. Stretched skins, such as one standout at Brazil's Butantan Institution, are up to 33 feet long. Historic reports claim the Butantan skin came from a 25-foot serpent. With such size and potential size, Adult green anacondas are undisputed apex predators who dominate their native environments. Of course, getting to adulthood and full size is a long, hard journey. Juvenile anacondas are common prey for various birds, mongooses, cats, and larger snakes, including bigger anacondas. Even adult males are at risk of being killed by their larger female mates who work up massive appetites during breeding. Prey includes fish, amphibians, mammals, reptiles, and birds. Huge specimens go after things like capybaras, deer, iguanas, turtles, wild pigs, and even jaguars or caiman. This diverse menu means an anaconda can consume animals that are up to 50% of their own body weight. Their chief hunting strategy involves lying in wait and ambushing potential victims. Their olive green skin and dark blotches are the perfect camouflage for hunting in murky water or thick jungle vegetation. When prey wanders into striking range, the anaconda lunges with lightning speed and grabs onto prey with 80 to 120 needle-sharp recurved teeth. While holding with its teeth, the snake then coils its muscular bulk around the victim, squeezing gradually and cutting off circulation and causing suffocation. And a little death, of course. In the water, the anaconda can also force victims to drown, which makes its job easier. Once the prey is killed, it's time to eat. Like most snakes, the anaconda can unhinge its jaws to accommodate food wider than its head. It also has an extra elongated windpipe, 
that moves around to allow the snake to breathe when swallowing its huge meals. The jaws work in tandem to manipulate the food and guide it down the snake's gullet. All in all, it can take up to several hours to completely swallow large prey whole. Of course, such hunting and feeding techniques do pose a few risks. Sometimes struggling prey can cause lacerations or sheer blunt force trauma on snakes, which can be life-threatening. The snake is also vulnerable while it is eating, and its ability to escape danger is severely compromised. Luckily, anacondas do have a loophole. In cases when a feeding or recently fed snake is threatened or otherwise stressed, it can regurgitate its meal and free itself to either fight or flee. If escape is not possible, anacondas will try to fight and kill would-be assailants. They also have keratin scales all over their bodies, which gives them a natural tough-as-nails armor, because keratin is the same stuff your literal fingernails are made of. Like many large reptiles, green anacondas have super slow metabolisms, which means it can take them weeks to digest a single meal. After digestion, anacondas can be satisfied for weeks or even months before they need to hunt again. This means hunts are actually pretty rare, which could explain why huge snakes are so elusive. They're probably resting and digesting in the depths most of the time, away from investigative eyes. It also makes sense why the largest anacondas would spend most of their time in the water. Hauling their massive and bulky bodies over land is a big chore, but they are much faster, smoother, and more elegant in the water. They're also much more dangerous, so you better watch out if you're stooping to take a drink in the river. With eyes and nostrils at the top of its head, an anaconda can poke out of the water while the rest of its immense body remains submerged underwater. When fully submerged, the snake can hold its breath for at least 10 minutes, and some have been documented remaining underwater for 49 minutes. The snakes are mostly active after dark, which makes them even harder for researchers to find or for prey to spot. As you probably guessed, anacondas aren't the most friendly animals and tend to live by themselves for most of their lives. But when the rainy season rolls around, love is in the air. Female anacondas release a bunch of airborne pheromones that attract males from all over. Using its flickering tongue, a potential Romeo picks up the sweet trail and travels across water, land, and anything else to compete for a chance at romance. And what a competition it is! The males approach and coil around the female and jostle and jockey for position. Each male tries to position his cloaca against the females. Usually, the biggest and strongest males win, but significantly larger females can tip the scale for the cutest, more potentially tastiest. These coiled breeding balls can involve 13 snakes, and such breeding mostly takes place in the water. After mating, the female is pregnant for six to seven months. Unlike many other snakes, anacondas are ovoviviparous, which means they give birth to live offspring. Baby anacondas are around 2.5 feet at birth, and litters usually have between 20 and 40 constricting bundles of joy, though sometimes the number can get to 100. After birth, anaconda moms move on with their lives and leave their young to care for themselves. Less than half of litters reach sexual maturity in full size, as most of them get picked off by all sorts of predators. Anacondas reach sexual maturity between 3 and 4 years of age and have a lifespan of around 10 years in the wild. In captivity, the snakes can live up to 30 years with proper care. These immense serpents are iconic super predators that were popularized by a bunch of horror media like the Anaconda film franchise. Fortunately, unlike the movies, there is no record of anacondas eating people. Most populations live in remote areas far from significant human settlements. That said, it's not impossible for an anaconda to overpower, kill, and consume a human, especially someone who isn't overly big. Reticulated pythons have been documented with human remains in their guts, so it's not hard to imagine the bigger and stronger anaconda eating a person. If you ever find yourself in green anaconda territory, Make sure you're traveling with another person or, even better, a group of people. It would be very difficult or even impossible to get a large snake off of you without some sort of help, and the task would be even harder in the water. Why Anacondas Are So Big 
Anacondas are so large because they have evolved and adapted to environments where they have their weights supported by an aquatic lifestyle and have their dietary needs met by a wide range of large prey. Think about it. A lot of the world's biggest animals live in the water, full-time or partially. Water and the buoyancy it affords offsets the effects of gravity, meaning such heavy animals can move more efficiently without being weighed down by their own girth. If water was not so abundant in the Amazon and Orinoco regions, these snakes would not exist at all, or they would have evolved smaller sizes for more efficient movement on land or in trees. The tropical aquatic wildlands of South America are synonymous with big snakes, and they have supported giant serpents for tens of millions of years, if not longer. One iconic anaconda ancestor slash cousin is Titanoboa, the largest snake of all time. These giant beasts lived a similar lifestyle to modern anacondas, lying in wait in the water before striking at massive crocodilians or turtles. Titanoboa is believed to have reached lengths of 40 feet and weights of over 2,500 pounds, making it more than twice as long and five times as heavy as typical green anacondas. Its extinction is often tied to climate changes, including drastic shallowing of its water kingdoms and decline in atmospheric oxygen. With prey like turtles and caiman in their environment, anacondas need that length and muscle mass to grab, constrict, and eat large meals. Additionally, Anacondas might be so big because of their ectothermic or cold-blooded nature. Unlike mammals or other warm-blooded creatures, big snakes don't expend energy to keep their large bodies warm. Instead, they get warmed up by basking in the sun or settling in warm waters. At the same time, a large body is better for retaining body heat. So basically, anacondas can afford their large size because they don't cost energy to warm up, and they retain body heat well which helps them with their nocturnal activity. Then we also have the fact that anacondas need large stores of energy in between hunts. Females in particular need the exercise for their body's energy reserves, which are crucial for breeding, gestation, and birth. Also, with up to 100 three-foot babies inside them, female anacondas need all the extra room they can get. Lastly, there is the lack of predators. Sure, many young ones get picked off, but adult anacondas don't have much to fear unless they're in a vulnerable situation such as when they are moving around on land or when they are eating and digesting their huge meals.